I'm going to keep it really simple for everyone. Where do we start? There's so many different ways to start, so many different areas. Let's start with the wash. So the way we wash our skin is really important. And it depends on your skin type as well. It depends on what your skincare needs are. I personally like a foam or some kind of gel because I have a really oily skin. But if you are on the drier side or if you're on the side of, you know, a bit more sensitivity, you want something a bit more comforting, maybe a cream that has a slight mild foam to it. But I'm going to give you a bonus round, guys. So check out the bonus round is an oil cleanser. So most people use an oil cleanser and the PM when they want to take off all of the makeup or if you have sunscreen that uh, you've been at the beach all day and you want to really, really rid yourself of all of that emulsifying dirt and grime. So if you really want to break down anything that's on the topical layer of your dermis, start with an oil cleanser. But with an oil cleanser, you do want to wash that off afterwards. So that's what we call double cleansing. So an oil cleanser is usually paired by another cleanser that's going to soften and not dry the skin out afterward. Step two. Step two is one of my favorite portions to start with because even when I start with makeup, even when I start doing someone's makeup, I usually jump in step two. Hopefully their face is already washed. I pray, I hope. And then I go in with a toner or some kind of softening lotion or some kind of essence. First up, let's get into some skincare science. When it comes to your routine, you wanna start with a toner or an essence, which is made up of really small molecules. Then you'll work your way up to moisturizers and oils, which are made up of really large molecules. The reason for this is because the small molecules first penetrate your skin more deeply. So hydration, vitamins, things you want to deliver to the lower layers of your skin go first. The larger molecules sit on top of your skin. So things that protect the surface of your skin, lotions, sunscreens, those go last. And how do you know which products are made up of smaller molecules? We know what they look like because they're almost close to water. The consistency, if you shake the bottle, it looks like water in a bottle. So essence, why do we want to use it? What it does is it softens our skin. It allows anything that we use after to penetrate the pores much more. And it's like the primer, if you will, of the skincare routine. When you think about the difference between an essence and a toner, a toner removes things from your skin. It subtracts. So a toner possibly may, not always, but possibly may have a bit more of an astringent quality. It may be for someone who happens to be a little bit oilier or maybe battling something that a skincare concern like acne, that's what toners are there for. Toners are gonna reduce a lot of sebum or oil production. In essence, it delivers things to your skin. It adds vitamins, hydration, or other benefits. This is why an essence is for everyone. An essence is one and all. An essence or softener is for anyone who has skin. But someone who is using a toner may just be a bit oilier, may, be, ha, may have combination skin. So if you are using a toner, you uh, nine times out of 10 are not dry. When you think about applying your softening toners or your essences, always press them into the skin. So get into a habit of pouring them into your palm. You don't need a lot. You maybe use like a quarter size or a dime size amount and then swirl it around in your palms and then press it into your dermis, press it into your face. And what that does is it covers a, a wider amount of area or wider amount of real estate on your face, but rubbing is not the way to go. You don't want to really heat up a toner. You don't want to lose some of the properties that happen to be in those essences. So regardless of your skin type, it doesn't matter if you're 8 or 88 or if you're oily or dry or sensitive, a softening toner or an essence is key literally for everyone who has skin. So after your essence or after your toner, you need a serum. So serum is my literal, like literal favorite. I love wearing serums. And why am I getting happy talking about serums? I don't know why. I love serums because they're quick, they're easy, they repair the skin, they go really deep into the dermis, really deep into your pores. So they help to prime your skin for hydration. They help to rid yourself of wrinkles or, or repair. And what I love is I love the consistency. So if you guys see, it's really lightweight, it's so thin, and it's so sheer, it doesn't cover, it doesn't clog a pore, it goes into the pores and it helps you, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but it lives in a space between toners and moisturizer. And so in the summertime, if it's in a really hot climate, if I'm in Tulum or in Brazil or Miami and I wanna feel sexy and not oily, I'm just gonna stop here. So at, oftentimes I stop here because I have a really oily skin. I'll just put some SPF on. But after your serum, you definitely don't wanna skip out on eye cream. It's really important. Thank you. 
so the reason why eye cream is so important so important is because the skin on your eyes and the skin on your lips is so thin it's almost transparent so this is the weakest skin you have on your body it's paper thin and so the molecule in an eye cream is so much smaller than a moisturizer than a hydrator than an spf that's why your eye cream goes after your serum it goes after your essence uh, before you moisturize it when it comes to eye cream i've always been an advocate of using eye cream on your eyes but also on your lips and it also it's a really great prep for anyone who's using a matte lipstick and you don't want to change the texture of your lipstick always use an eye cream to hydrate so i use eye cream on my lips every single day since i was like 21. and then what you want to do i'll show you a really cool way to apply so when you're using anything around the eyes whether it be concealer whether it be you know eye cream always use your ring finger so your ring finger is the weakest finger you have it's going to pick up the least amount of product it's not aggressive so if you're using your index finger to apply concealer to apply eye cream every day it's so aggressive it's going to age your eyes so i like to go in and i always like to tap if you notice if you guys have seen me work a lot i always tapping 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 and so what that does is it keeps things on top of the skin and it doesn't move the concealer it doesn't move my foundation i can tap and not disrupt so think about tapping and not disrupting when we think about moisturizing i think of a mosaic of different things that i can offer my skin at different times of the year for different reasons when i pack and i travel i'll travel with different skincare depending on the weather where i'm going to go or depending what my skincare needs will be. This right here, I want you to take a look at something like this. So this is a moisturizer. It's a cream-based moisturizer. It's gonna offer hydration to the skin, but it doesn't clog the pores. This is the easiest prep for makeup because it's right in the middle. So it's great for someone who is oily, but it's even better for someone who's dry. And it's just really right in the middle of the spectrum. When you're looking for a moisturizer for normal skin or skin that has happened to be combination, your basic moisturizer is gonna be emollient and it's not gonna be oily. So it's gonna be a water-based moisturizer. It may be in a pump, it may be in a tube, uh, but it's just gonna offer basic hydration, basic hydration. Hopefully there may be an SPF or some kind of sun factor to protect yourself from the sun. You only need to protect yourself from the sun in the AM. You don't need an SPF in your PM regime at all. Here in the middle, I have an even lighter moisturizer. I'm not sure if you can see how light that texture is, but it's super sheer and whipped. And this is really great for someone who has oily skin. So this is a mattifying moisturizer. This moisturizer is going to offer my skin hydration, but no oil, and it'll keep my shine or the sebum production that my pores like to do in the middle of the day, it keeps it at bay. So this mattifying moisturizer is really great for someone who is really oily or who knows that throughout the day, maybe my makeup may lift. So I have a little hack for you guys. I like to multi-moisturize. So multi-moisturizing is almost like multi-masking. Maybe I have different concerns in my T-zone than I have on my cheeks, which I do. So I want a mattifying moisturizer in my T-zone, but I want something really comforting for the inflammation I have on the rosacea on my cheeks. And that's okay to do. If you happen to be on the drier side, if you need something that's comforting in terms of moisture, if you live in a really cool climate, you want to go for a thicker moisturizer. You want to go for something more emollient. And that's why I love texture that happens to be whipped like this. So if you notice, this has the thicker consistency. It looks heavier, but it's light as a cloud. And this is going to offer massive hydration. But you know what? I really love to do things like this for the body. And I'll even make a DIY body illuminator out of something like this. I'll maybe add some like beautiful bronzy liquids to this and just smear it all over the body for my clients. And it just looks like a dream. It doesn't have to be transfer resistant. I mean, I don't have the technological ability here to make that happen, but I'll go into my kit and I'll find liquid luminizers that have a very small particle. When I say small particle, you don't want it to be super glittery. You don't want it to be chunky. You want it to look a bit more evolved and refined in terms of the mica that's inside. And then you throw that into a paper cup with a plastic spoon and a really beautiful whipped texture like, like this here. And it's going to give you the most beautiful body glow around. When I think about it, a moisturizer that happens to be uh, a consistency like this, which it happens to be really emollient, a whipped texture, this is not for me. <laughs> this is not for me because I have really oily skin. My pores are already large. It's just not a good look. And I need to go on the spectrum of a lighter serum or a lighter moisturizer that has oil controlling ability. That's just me. And if someone else out there is like that, they understand what I'm saying. 
But if you do need something that's going to calm inflammation, if you do have really dry skin that happens to feel uncomfortable at times, you're on this side of the spectrum, which is more emollient. So this last baby over here, this is an ointment, if you will. This is called eight hour cream, actually. That's actually the working name. The reason that we love something like this, this will get rid of chapped areas of the skin, really damaged cuticles, uh, areas that need a bit more love, a bit more attention. But this isn't something that you use every day. But a little hack is, uh, everyone knows this in our business, but this is what we make those beautiful glossy lids that you see in editorials or on the runway. It's not lip gloss, it's actually eight hour cream. So this right here has literally been in my kit since I was 19. I mean, not the same bottle, <laughs> well, different bottles. And what I love about it is I love how light reflective this is. Can you see the light reflection here is actually unmatched. So having a freshly moisturized face is so important when it comes to applying your foundation, applying your concealer. I always tell people, this is one of the things everyone knows about me, always apply your foundation or concealer while your skin is wet, while your moisturizer hasn't dried. So that space, that 45 seconds you have after applying your moisturizer is the key time to apply your foundation and concealer. It dries in a really organic way and it makes you look like you woke up like this. I love to use oil because it locks in your skincare. It makes sure everything stays put. Uh, and also oil, which sidebar, I used to be terrified of oil. I'm going to keep it real. And I never use oil, but I know that oil now conditions the skin. Even if you have oily skin, it isn't something that you should be afraid of. So look at the texture here. I'm using maybe four, four drops of oil, max. And so this little bit of oil is all I need to protect or to lock in all of the, the beautiful serums and treatments and uh, money I've spent on these things. Keep that all in my skin. I don't want that to go anywhere. So I do love an oil to make sure that uh, it's a balancing act. Skincare can be expensive. Uh, so a good way to make sure that you're using the right amount is start with a pea size amount. Never pour out more than you need. You don't have a lot of area on your face to cover and any excess that you do have, use it and rub it into the body, rub it into the areas that get the most attention or that you want the most attention. This is where you pick up more extra credit here it is SPF. SPF, I cannot talk about how important SPF is in terms of keeping our skin youthful and protecting it from UVA, UVB rays, the number one aggressor or the number one thing that's going to age your skin is going to be the sun, period. One thing I like to do, I like to use an SPF of 40. So and I keep this baby in my car. I have, I'm bald. So, you know, I need to protect my scalp as well. I have a sunroof. I live in LA. <laughs> so I even make sure that I use SPF on my head. I use SPF on my hands, guys. My hands are always on camera. <laughs> so I need to make sure I protect my hands, my chest, you know, my little decolletage, I guess, if you will. Any area of your body that's exposed daily, make sure that you cover it up with SPF. It's the most important thing you're going to learn here today. And guys, I'm going to tell you a little something here. Uh, a lot of melanated communities feel like we don't need SPF. We do. Black doesn't crack, but it sags. So we need to make sure that we are protecting ourselves from the sun. Uh, and it's one of those things where you won't see the same visible damage, but you'll have internal structural damage to the collagen. The collagen will break down. So if that gets through to my melanated communities, I hope you understand now. I'm going to give you a quick thing to look for when it comes to SPF. So I love the space that we're in. There's so many technological advances in SPF. You don't need to find an SPF that gives a white cast any longer. And the reason I love these now, so this one right here, this happens to be the one I use daily and look how clear it is. It's clear. It's mattifying. It's a beautiful primer for makeup. This is like velvet on the skin. When you're looking for an SPF, stay away from things that dry down really white. You don't have to worry about that if you happen to have a lighter complexion, but for my deeper complexion communities, uh, make sure that you find an SPF that goes on sheer and stays sheer. And when you're looking at makeup, ladies and gents, there's something called titanium dioxide. And what that does is it gives, it flashes back at the camera because it protects from uh, UVA or UVB light. That's not a good thing to set your makeup with. It's great for the sun, but it's horrible in pictures. You'll always have a very super, super white cast on your face. So just remember those little things in your head when you're looking for an SPF. If you are a hardcore minimalist, or if you're going away on a quick trip, maybe a weekend getaway, something like that, what can you do without? Well, I'll tell you what you should have. You should have a serum. You should possibly have a heavier moisturizer if you need it. 
and then an SPF. And then other than that, besides that and a facial wash, you're in a really good place. But whenever I need that extra step, when I need a little bit of, a little bit more than my skincare could provide, I kind of glamouflage and I just throw in some shades. So this is all the sun protection I need for my eyes when I'm in a, when I'm in a hurry. So guys, a baseball cap will do, sunglasses will do. It protects yourself from the sun and also it's gonna make you look pretty cool.